Welcome. This is Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. In this video, we are going to show how to control various aspects of creativity. We can isolate the causes of the volume of ideas, their direction, and their likely quality. Each of these aspects can be adjusted to best match the goal that is being pursued. This means that you can tailor your counsel to the specific interests of your clients. This sounds like something worth doing. And the place to start doing it is to define exactly what we are talking about. Pete Mosberger of Heidelberg University identified 100 unique scientific definitions of creativity. Heaven knows how many more non-scientific definitions there are. So, the first thing we have to do is to find a common denominator for all of these definitions. Well, we know that humans are not gods. We can't make something out of absolutely nothing. And that tells us that creativity will always involve associating existing things. These things can be concepts, materials, data, processes, or anything else. But it always has to be something. We also know that not everything we do will be considered creative. To qualify as creative, an idea must be new and unexpected. So, we now know that IOP technology is going to apply. Creativity requires the input of things. Things that somehow must be associated to produce a novel and unexpected outcome. IOP technology gives us a lens with which to look at this kind of creativity. So, let's use it. We can begin with the input element of the IOP model. Everything starts with an issue of concern. There has to be some focal point, something you want to change. The more different inputs that you get, and the more of them you are willing to accept as potentially relevant, the greater is the probability that one or another will ultimately give rise to a creative response to the thing that you want to change. In the IOP model, the volume of raw ideas is primarily controlled by styles. Styles using unpatterned input naturally accept a greater volume and range of input possibilities. Styles using structured input are more purposeful and selective. This automatically reduces the odds of encountering the really out-of-the-box idea. So, if you want to have a lot of possibilities to choose from, enlist people who use relatively more unpatterned input strategies. But be careful. Chuck Furman is a recently retired VP of R&D for a major food company. He put a bunch of heavy RIs into a room for a little brainstorming. Great session. Lots of ideas. As they were leaving, Chuck asked, who took notes? Needless to say, no one did. It's not enough to get ideas. You have to remember them, too. A little structure sometimes does help, even when focusing on pure idea generation. Raw ideas don't have to come from the outside. Some can be generated simply by thinking of the stuff you are now doing or already know. Whatever you are doing, you can be sure it involves manipulating some things. Those things can always be broken down into component parts. And those parts can themselves become raw idea inputs. This even applies to things that don't seem to have any component parts. For example, Einstein looked at empty space. And he found that it had a geometry. It could be distorted and warped. He went on to find that time was entwined with space to form a space-time fabric. Anything you can think of can be broken down into pieces. So, what about all of the techniques like brainstorming, brute think, and the thousand other such tools that try to force out-of-the-box ideas? Well, they all work. And the reason that none of them work consistently is that they are being applied to people with different profiles. Apply them to a group of people using unpatterned inputs, and you'll get a deluge of ideas. Apply the same technique to a group of structured people, and you'll be at it all day. And at the end of that day, the raw volume of ideas is likely to be relatively meager. In final analysis, it's the people in the room, not the technique being used, 
that determines the volume and range of ideas generated. IOP Profiles tells you who is who and who is likely to do what. And the same thing that applies to individuals applies to groups. All you have to do is to overlay profiles to get a picture of what is going to happen when you put a particular group of people together to work as a group. Using a little selection and role allocation, you can make sure that the combined profiles point to unpatterned styles. And you're going to get a lot of ideas. So, we now know how to generate a high volume of ideas. But now, we have a lot of ideas of very uneven quality. Creative quality concerns the probability that a particular idea will actually be successful in practice. Quality is controlled by the process element of the IOP model. Process is iterative. In other words, it homes in on the desired outcome a step at a time. Process tells input what to look for and or what to accept. And it tells output what is possible based on the input that is available. This give and take method bounces back and forth between inputs available and output possibilities. It constantly adjusts both in light of the other. And once this bouncing back and forth has produced an idea, there are two ways of assessing its quality, analysis and experimentation. The experimental approach yields a quick yes or no answer. It is generally fast and cheap, as long as the consequences of failure are not disastrous. Analysis is the other basic way of assuring quality. The analysis option uses a connect the dots approach. The input element provides the dots and the intended output provides the lines. Styles using structure are the bulwark of the analytical approach. The interest of the hypothetical analyzer, for example, centers on systems level thinking. You know, what causes what and why and by how much. The logical processor, the other structured style, focuses on operations, things that get done over and over again. This concentration gives them a depth of practical insight as opposed to the general scope offered by the more theoretical hypothetical analyzer. But regardless of the method, quality testing always involves challenging ideas that have committed sponsors. Tension is a natural and virtually inevitable part of the process. It is to be managed, not avoided. And one way to manage it is to balance the people favoring the various forms of idea generation and assessment in light of a specific goal. But even now the job is not done. We also have to consider the direction of the creative initiatives. Direction is controlled by the output element of the IOP model. Output is a continuum that ranges from thought to action. Thought outputs are things where the goal of the activity has no effect on others. For example, you might have a goal of making a shopping list. In putting it together, you may talk to others or buy newspapers to get coupons. You can do a lot of things in creating a physical list, but all of it is thought-based. The only direct effect of your goal is on you. Action is the other side of the continuum. This might happen where your goal is to get the groceries. The cashier takes your money, the inventory system replaces what you bought, the bagger packages your purchases. Lots of people have been directly affected by your goal of getting the groceries. That is action. Your moves have changed the world in direct response to your goal. The output scale is a continuum. That means that you can take partial steps between thought and action. For example, you might stop by the bank to withdraw some money but then change your mind about getting the groceries. You have taken a partial step. The full effect of your goal has not yet been felt by the people outside yourself. The IOP profile measures output preferences. On an individual basis, you can substantially increase the odds of success by selecting people who are naturally aligned to the kind of output you expect. IOP profiles can also be combined to get an accurate estimate of the likely direction of a group. You need only construct a team profile to favor the output direction that you are targeting. If your goal is concrete outcomes, focus on styles who favor action as their preferred output. If your goal is identifying options rather than doing something with them, 
point the profiles toward styles favoring thought as the output. This brief video has shown that IOPT is able to provide knowledge of at least three distinct creativity components. You now have new glasses with which to see the world of creativity with more clarity. Knowledge that discriminates between these components can be used to reliably achieve results that would be otherwise unattainable. For example, unused municipal land can be put to many uses. An idea-oriented team can generate a volume of ideas for a city to consider. In another situation, your goal might be remedying a system security breach. Action rather than options are what you need. A team whose natural direction is toward instant action would be near ideal. The creative fix may not be perfect or even particularly creative, but things will run again. In still another situation, you might be focused on a major capital investment. A high quality assessment is likely to be your highest priority. Designing a group strongly favoring a thought-based analytical style will likely produce the high quality processing needed to support the decision. These examples were chosen to demonstrate that volume, quality, and direction can be addressed independently. In most cases, you're going to want to mix and match these creative dimensions. And IOP allows you to do that with precision. For example, the city looking to employ its unused land might want to add a secondary analytical capacity to the team to help improve the quality of the ideas generated. By selecting thought-based styles, the direction stays in the realm of ideas. Volume remains relatively high, but the quality of ideas improves, at the cost of more time and effort. The different aspects of creativity can help to better target the specific goal being pursued, and to increase the odds that it will actually be realized. In this process, we've shown that everyone, regardless of their IA profile, has a role in bringing ideas from inception to fruition, and it is not the same role for everyone. Knowing who can best fill which role pays dividends not only for the goal, but also for the people pursuing it. This video has attempted to demystify creativity. In this process, it is believed to have produced a positive step forward in organizational design and practice. Thank you for viewing this video. If you would like to learn more about IOP technology, please visit our websites at IOP.com or OEinstitute.org. Both sites have much more information on IOPT and the areas where it has or can be applied. Thank you again for your interest in IOP technology.